all. The most valuable thing in life is family. Nothing even comes close. It's the most valuable thing that we have. <clears throat> you may not realize it, but much of what you are comes from your family. Much of what you become comes from family. You may not realize it until later in life, but it always happens. Your family forms what you are, and it's the most valuable thing that you have, and you must maintain it and keep it pristine and perfect. Now, <clears throat> the next thing I have learned is that in most families, there are certain expectations, things that you're expected to do as a member of that family. Uh, these are usually not written down, they're not spoken, but everybody knows what you're expecting. In this family, in my family, we have certain expectations. First of all, you're expected to do well in school, to do your best, not slough it off, not put it aside, but, but work at it diligently. You're expected to finish your education. That means going to college to get a college degree. If you want to go beyond that, that's fine, but you're expected to go that far. You're also expected beyond college to have some role in your life, some goal, some function, something that you do. It may be a job, it may be a profession, it may be raising a family, it doesn't matter what it is. But you need something to guide your life and give it some permanent meaning. So expectations from family are very important. What does family give us? Well, it's from family you learn such things as love, and kindness, and caring, and compassion, manners, truthfulness. That comes largely from family. It's hard to find those traits anywhere else in society. If you have those traits, they probably came from your family. It's important to keep those family traits as much as possible. I found that in this family, you're expected to have good manners. You're expected to be nice to people, to be kind to people. You're expected to always be truthful. You're not expected to, to lie and to cheat. If you want to lie and cheat, you've got to go find some other family. We don't do that. <laughs> In this family, you're expected to, to develop courage. And I don't mean physical courage, I mean courage to face life's problems, difficulties, because there'll be lots of them out there. So it's important that you maintain these expectations for your family. The next thing I have learned has to do with parenting. And I have found that in parenting, the most important thing you can do is to be a role model. It's a whole lot more important what you do than what you say. Whether you realize it or not, others, particularly your children, have their eyes on you all the time. They're going to pick up certain traits, certain habits, certain things that you carry with you. You don't know what they're going to pick up. They don't know. They will know later in life. But that means you must always be on your good behavior. And this especially applies to morality, uh, to goodness, uh, to ethics. If you expect your children to be ethical and moral, you must always be that way. Always. Always. So I, that, I think, is the most important thing in parenting. Now, another thing I have learned in life is that when you graduate from college, that's not the end of your education. It's just the beginning. What the formal education is all about is to prepare you to teach yourself for the next 50 years. Nobody else is going to do it. You've got to do it yourself. You've got to work hard at it. And I found that one of the easiest, the best ways to do this is through reading. Reading is, is special. Children who are avid readers, good readers, are always excellent, excellent students. You just look around. Uh, older people who read a lot are well rounded, much more well rounded, more knowledgeable, and they seem to be more content. 
So I would recommend reading. The best way is, of course, to have books in your home. A home library, Kindle library. If that's not feasible, the next best thing in today's world still is a public library. And I recommend to people that you introduce yourself and your children to the public library. It's still the best place to educate adults in this country. The internet has not caught up yet. It's, it will eventually, but it's not there yet. You need to browse the library and discover things that you never dreamed to ask or inquire about. So reading is all important. Uh, the next thing I have learned is that time spent with nature has special meaning. And it's hard to describe, and I'm not sure what that is exactly. But if you spend time with nature, meditate with nature, uh, look at nature, God's great creation, it gives your life a certain peace and serenity that you cannot get in any other way. It doesn't matter how you uh, meld with nature. You can do it in a backyard garden. You can do it stroking the beach, uh, walk through the woods, hike in the mountains. It doesn't matter. You can see a beautiful sunset. You can see the intricacy of a beautiful flower. You can see animal behavior. In some ways, time spent meditating with this gives your life qualities that you don't have otherwise. The last thing I would say to you is, I have found that one of the best traits that you can have is to always keep your word. If you tell someone you will do something, you always always do it that's a very difficult trait to acquire it takes a lot of effort lots of training but if you <clears throat> can develop the reputation for being always true to your word it is worth a great deal now this has special meaning to my family <clears throat> because this trait of faithfulness to the word is found in the pierce motto which is found in the coat of arms. And that coat of arms are two Latin words, Fecit and Dicit, which means he said it and he did it. Or she said it and she did it always. <clears throat> I find that being faithful to your word brings lots of good. Once again, I want to thank uh, all of you for being out here tonight, everyone in the family, Trisha particularly, <laughs> the brothers, and we always have ideal relationships. But thanks to every one of you. That's enough preaching for today. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to what we've been doing. <laughs> Again, on behalf of the family, thank you very much today for being here for this special event. Um, we have the place until 3 o'clock, so you're welcome to stay and visit and talk to my dad. There are copies of some of my dad's books on the back uh, table, and you're welcome to take those uh, uh, free of charge, I think. Uh, <laughs> take any of those that you want. So again, thank you very much for being here, and enjoy the rest of the afternoon.